Hello, greetings, and hang on. Sappin' in la, Adam Cleary from 442 here. Really sorry about that. And on a slot, Liverpool. I've uh, given them a watch, and they're different. Yeah, life after Jurgen Klopp appears to be going quite well for them, in pre-season anyways. They've beaten Betis and Arsenal and smashed Man United and Sevilla. And even though they've been completely inactive in the transfer window, just by watching them, you can see that Slot's already doing two or three really different, really interesting things with how this team plays. So what are those things, Adam? That's why I clicked on the video. Well, I'll show you. Right now, before we begin, a small but exciting bit of housekeeping. Today's video is sponsored! And I know, I know nobody really likes being advertised to, but a couple of things, right? One, this is kind of a big moment for us in our continued growth and will let us do exciting things on the channel. Very good. Two, it's HelloFresh, which I genuinely actively use in my real life, so at least I'm being sincere with it. Three, we've turned off a number of the other adverts in the video, so you're not being, like, bombarded from all angles all the way throughout. And four, I worked quite hard on it to make it funny, so if nothing else, you'll enjoy watching it. But that'll be a little bit later on, so just this is Liverpool, and this is what they're doing. So if you've seen any of the lineups for their pre-season games, I think this is the Man United one, you'll see that they're listed as being in a 4-3-3. And nobody says this anymore, but that is Poppycock. So what's been very apparent and very interesting about this 4-3-3 that Slot is using is the role of both the fullbacks and the role of the two number eights. So if you recall, last season, the overwhelming tactical question that was being asked about Liverpool was how Jurgen Klopp was using these fullbacks. Because if you remember, Klopp's Liverpool at their absolute pomp when they had this sort of team. The way it worked was that Firmino would drop out of this space. The wide players would then try and get to fill it. So you would want the fullbacks to give you all the width down both sides. And that's where Alexander-Arnold and Robertson would get you a billion FPL points with all their assists. But then as Klopp tried to evolve this team and he brought in Darwin Nunes to be a far more sort of traditional central striker and the focal point of the attack, that meant that he was in these spaces so the wider players were a little bit further out, meaning there was less onus on the fullbacks to provide the width. The number eight, they were doing that instead. And that's where Trent Alexander-Arnold started to enjoy his life as an inverted fullback in the middle of the pitch. So the question has been for Arna Slot, which of these two systems will he favour for one of Liverpool and England's most talented players? Will he want him bombing up and down the flank like he used to, or will he want him in the middle where he has become accustomed to playing? And wouldn't you just know it from what we've seen in pre-season? The answer is... Neither. Now this 4-3-3 that they've been using in pre-season, and I keep saying, by the way, using in pre-season because of this, the scheduling of this, my job, I've had to record it after they played the last pre-season game, but before they play the Ipswich game. So yes, there is a slight chance that things might have changed, but I mean, come on, it's not like a manager is going to spend all the practice games doing this cool, exciting stuff only to then chuck it out the window as soon as the real football starts. That never happens, does it, Gareth? Anyway, so disregard this being a 4-3-3, right? As soon as Liverpool get possession at the back, they go to a double pivot. One of the eights drops in, and the other eight goes and pushes right the way up. And then the fullbacks, they basically come into a line along with the midfield. So you basically get like a 2-4-4. Four, four. And you can see that absolutely perfectly, by the way, in their average positions map from the friendly against Man United. Like, genuinely, I was going to use that and sort of try and illustrate with it. I just, I did not think that would be that perfect. But there it is, two defenders, the fullbacks pushed right the way up into the midfield, and these four lads just floating around doing their thing. And the reasons they're doing this are many and clever. So first off, it's a frankly terrifying proposition for any team who wants to try and press this shape, because Liverpool have seven players in this area. So if you want to go man for man, you want to make sure you've got somebody to close down every possible option, you would have to leave one of the most dangerous attacking teams in the world four on four at the back. So probably very few teams are going to do that, which means by and large, Liverpool will be able to build out in this shape with numerical superiority pretty much anywhere. But the reason I mentioned before that the first great Liverpool team under Klopp wanted the width to come from the fullbacks 
that's not what this is. You can see here they are wide. Yes, they're not in the center, but they are part of the build up, not necessarily part of the attack. And that means that the objective for Liverpool's two wide players is to isolate the opposition fullbacks high up the pitch and nice and wide. And while you are going to see Liverpool having a lot of controlled possession at the back to try and unpick uh, the team's opposition press. The whole idea of having these forwards isolate the fullbacks is so you can, when the opportunity presents itself, go direct into them and get like a dangerous situation just like that. If you sort of imagine that Liverpool, when they're getting really squeezed by an aggressive side, effectively go to this like three, four shape, including the goalkeeper, and the fullbacks, they don't stay too wide, they don't hug the touchline, they come in nice and centrally, so you've got all these bodies and all these possible passing lanes. The objective is not to keep the ball here, it is to get it out of this area, bypassing as many opposition players as possible in the process. So it's a very Sabutio heavy video, this one, I'll grant you right, but just pretend you are Liverpool in this scenario and your objective is to get the ball to your left winger here who has isolated his fullback one-on-one, -on -one. but as most teams do, they are pressing you in an aggressive 4-4-2. There's not really any way through these two lines. What you are able to do with this many players and this sort of like, I don't know, double W shape, I'm not sure if it's got a term, is you can have really clever, effective rotations within the triangles. And if you are sitting there thinking, Adam, I've watched an awful lot of this channel the last 12 to 18 months, this is probably the most nerdy you've ever sounded, you are right, by not moving the fullbacks into the middle of the pitch, but also not having them on the touchline either, it means they can basically move their marker in and out to free up the lanes to the attackers. So, because you were gonna have a 3v2 advantage here, right, let's say the goalkeeper has the ball, he is pressed by the attacker and it goes out to the center back here, all of a sudden, he's got a bit of space. Now, he really wants to get the ball into the left wing back here, but of course, this passing lane is blocked by the midfield, but your fullback, he can just wander into the center or wander out to the touchline, taking his marker with him and allowing that passing lane to be created. Now, as you know, a lot of teams will look to have the ball at the back and find little numerical overloads to sort of play through. But what's quite unique, I think, about slot systems, certainly in the Premier League, is because you've got so many of these players in this area and it's so narrow and so compact where other teams would like look to stretch the opposition as much as possible. It means it's a little bit, it's the word I want, better insured. If Liverpool do make a mistake in this block and when they're trying to do things, because they've got so many bodies around the ball, it allows them to counter press things really aggressively, and not with the goalkeeper obviously, and really effectively. Now imagine over the course of the season, as they are getting to grips with this, you will probably see Liverpool lose the ball quite a lot in their own defensive third, which should theoretically be fatal. But also, I think you'll see them win it back there immediately afterwards, almost as often. It's not without its risks. You can see here in the Man United friendly, they've got that two, they've got that four, they feel like they can break the line, but it's just an errant pass and that lets the opposition in. But anyway, that's interesting, isn't it? A third role for Trent Alexander-Arnold to somehow learn at this stage of his career. But I did say it wasn't just the fullbacks that was interesting, it was the number eight. So what are they doing? So, as any of you who can stand to follow me on social media will know, when I'm not spending my time being North London's number one goalkeeper in the over 35 under 6 foot tall category, I am a demon in the kitchen. However, such are the demands of the never-ending football content cycle that I sometimes find it hard to make the sensational home-cooked top-tier bait that I have become accustomed to. But thanks to our good friends at HelloFresh, dinner is saved! Is that anything? Is that good? Yeah, sorry about that. Anyway, HelloFresh is the meal kit subscription service that delivers pre-portioned, high-quality, fresh ingredients straight to your door. With step-by-step -step recipes and a frankly ludicrous choice of meals, it saves you time, money, and waste. Like, genuinely, I can never measure rice. Nobody can. It's physically not possible. But here's the exact amount I needed for this rascal tikka masala sea bass I spoiled myself with after putting in another, like, 6 out of 10 performance at Sunday League. And because I'm such a big fan, seriously, these are all the recipe cards I own, I'm a freak, we've got a belter little offer for fans of 442. Which is you, presumably. 
Use our code 4HF when you sign up and get 60% off your first box, 20% off the next two months, and free desserts for life. For life! That is the single best bit of value you are likely to see during a transfer window, let's be real. You can go to hellofresh.co.uk slash 4HF, or if, I don't know, you're too good for typing, the QR code that's been staring you in the face during this will take you straight there. I can't promise it's going to fix any of the other problems in your life, but hey, at least you'll be well fed. Right, now back to whatever it was I was talking about. Because while it is the job of one of the eight to drop back a little bit deeper to form that double pivot and get that box going, it's usually been Alexis McAllister uh, thus far. It's the job of the other one to not just become an eight, to not just become a ten, but to become a centre forward. Except not a centre forward, a false nine. Diogo Jota has been pretty much playing as Liverpool's first choice centre forward in pre-season thus far. And if we look at this heat map from him, you will neatly observe that is not the day in the life of a centre forward. That is about as false a false nine as you could ever hope to see. And I mean, obviously, given what we've just seen about Liverpool trying to invite as many players on as possible before effectively breaking those lines and getting up the pitch, it makes sense that you would have a false nine in attack because you're going to end up with all this space between the defence and midfield. If they can drop into that, they can get on the ball really high up. But not content with that is Arnie Slot, and he has his number eight. It has been Sabozlai, but they've been using him a couple of different ways. He pushes right the way up to get this line of four in attack, and the pair of them will both drop into the space, either together or separately, to receive the ball if Liverpool can break a line through the middle. And again, if we look at those average positions, I think this one's from the Sevilla game, you'll see that Luis Diaz and Mo Salah, they're providing the attacking width, they're always pushing up when possible, but Sabozalai and Jota, who were in this sort of role here, free to go pretty much anywhere, mostly just dropping into the same positions as and when they're able to, to get on the ball and get them up the pitch. And I know I keep saying, what's really interesting about this? But what is quite interesting about this is if you look at the positions of Alexander-Arnold and Simakas here, and we sort of compare that with their heat maps, you will see that as well as sort of doing this part of the build-up where they move the opposition around, they don't really look to get on the ball too much, they do provide attacking underlaps. Like I should have bought chairs in heat maps before doing this video, but this is Mo Salah's from that game. And if you're a long time Liverpool fan and also a bit of a geek who likes data, you'll know that's actually quite unusual for him. Like, yes, he gets the ball wide and yes, he's getting into the box, but nothing, nothing on the edge of it at all. He's either wide or going straight in. And that's because when they're in the build-up, he is where the width is supposed to come from. He's supposed to isolate that fullback and drag him out of position. And once Liverpool have got through that line and they move up the pitch, the fullbacks then don't go on the overlap. They don't provide width. They don't hover around in the centre to have possession. They have to fill that channel. And I would say that feels like an exceptional use of Connor Bradley and a bit of a weird one of Trent. The second goal against Man United does illustrate this, but sort of partially by showing you something and partially by not. Anyway, Salah gets the ball here, which does feel like it's a little bit wider than maybe he'd want. And you can see this huge gap in the sort of half space. And that's the kind of area Connor Bradley should have been bombing into. But if you rewind that clip back, he's just got caught up the other end. He's not joining in. Anyway, arriving into the box later than Mo Salah is, are Diogo Jota playing as the false nine and Harvey Elliott, who was doing the number eight into the false nine role. That's one of the reasons this could work particularly effectively because obviously the centre-backs know to be alive to Jota because he's the centre-forward and he makes that early run and it drags them both towards the goal. And then it's quite simple for Elliott to spot the gap, get in front of the covering fullback and tap it in at the back post. And where the vibes feel totally different, and vibes do matter, by the way, is if you just pause this clip, right before the pass comes in, that's just never really where you expect to see Mo Salah in a quick break. You know what I mean? Like, he's never looking to get to the byline and pull the ball back. He wants to be here, where there is space, and the system has created that space, but it's not for him. That space is for Bradley. He's doing his job really well. It's just that it's a different job for him. Should be fine. Now, and just, just come in for a second, right? Sit down, okay? Why am I telling you all this? Why am I doing a video on Liverpool's pre-season tactics when pre-season has finished? Why am I doing such a Subutio-heavy video for you? And the answer to that is because 
they haven't made any signings yet. Now, they might feel like two completely disparate, separate, unrelated topics, but they're actually not. If you go back to the original video we did on Arne Slot's appointment as Liverpool manager, what we said was that the reason he felt so suitable for Liverpool at this stage was because he's not some mad genius ideologue. He doesn't have one like narrow defined way of playing his football that he desperately needs specific players who do specific things to come to the club and do for him. The guy just understands football. And while it was interesting to look at his Feyenoord tactics, I didn't really think for a second that he was gonna bring that style of play to Liverpool because it's a completely different club with completely different players. And yes, some of the principles of it are here, the double pivot and having nice overloads, but how they're executing it is totally different. And the reason I mention all of this is because if I was a Liverpool fan, I wouldn't be panicking about the transfer situation. Like you've gone and got a manager in whose entire thing is, oh, I just look at the players I've got and I get the absolute best out of them and I find something that suits them really, really well. And looking at Liverpool in pre-season thus far, it feels like he's kind of already done that. This system is new and it's effective. Now, of course, have to clarify all of this with that quote from all the wars that they have, that no plan survives contact with the enemy. So we will see what this looks like against Ipswich. Hell, by the time you watch this video, you may have already seen what it looked like against Ipswich. And if they got beat in that game, I truly hope somebody clips this and puts the always sunny in Philadelphia music on. But I don't think that they will. In fact, I think they'll look quite good if not the finished article in that game. I would expect them to win and really surprise a few people with just how slick and fun and passy and movie they look in, uh, in that game. I do a serious football tactics channel. People come to me for insight, and I've just said passy and movie. But anyway, yes, that is the video. So Liverpool fans, how are you feeling about all of this? Because the no transfers thing is making people a little bit anxious, a little bit jumpy, a little bit uh, apprehensive. So all thoughts, all feelings, all comments, all poetry, verse and lyric, welcome down below. And of course, when you're down there, you will see our pinned comment with all the details and the links and the codes for our wonderful little offer that we have with HelloFresh today. Genuinely, I know people are like, ah, oh, adverts, 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 but this will help us do some really, really fun stuff. So just honestly, I use it. The food is good. I'm having it for tea tonight. Give it a go if you haven't already. You can get me on all the socials at Adam Cleary, C-L-E-O-Y, 442 socials in the corner of the video. The season preview of the mag. Bit late for that now, but it's still a good read. If you see that in uh, WH Smiths or wherever you might be, uh, I would recommend picking it up. But until next time, that's Liverpool. That's on a slot. Go buy a HelloFresh box and I'll see you soon. Bye. I really hope they win. <laughs> Bye.